Welcome to another informative video brought to you by Textron Aviation's customer support. My name is Roy Reardon and in today's video I'm going to be talking about chalking and mooring for the longitude and latitude aircraft. Now the tips I'm going to share with you today are pretty standard when it comes to aircraft equipped with tricycle style landing gear, but be sure to check your manuals for anything that's different with your aircraft. The first thing you want to consider is parking on a level surface. You don't want the aircraft to hop the chocks or weather vane because of unlevel ground. If it's a calm day and you're in for just some quick service, you don't have to worry so much about what direction you're facing the aircraft in. But if you're in an area of high taxi traffic, you do need to worry about jet blast. Jet blast can be just as dangerous, if not more so, than high winds. The fuselage and tail sections have large surface areas that can cause the aircraft to weather vane if jet blast hits it just right. If you're going to be parked for an extended period of time, or you expect bad weather, then my number one tip is to hangar the aircraft. If you can't do that, then be sure to face the aircraft towards the prevailing winds. Now you're going to have to be a bit of a meteorologist here and check the current weather conditions as well as the forecasted weather conditions for the amount of time that you're going to be parked. Now I won't talk specifically about the amount of time that you're going to be parked, but be sure to check for those details in Chapter 10. Being parked for less than 24 hours is quite different than being parked for a week. Okay, now we've got the aircraft on a level surface, we know how long we're going to be parked, and we know the forecast for the amount of time that we're going to be parked. The next step is to set the brakes, but be sure not to set the brakes if the brakes are hot. If the aircraft has just arrived, allow time to let the brakes cool before setting the brakes. Next up, we set the chocks at the main landing gear. The chalk should be six inches tall and fully engage both tires on the front and back side. If the chocks are gapped at all, it could allow the aircraft to start to roll and potentially gain enough momentum to jump the chocks. The only exception to having the chocks fully engaged would be when you are fueling the aircraft. Allow the chocks a bit of space while fueling so the tires don't compress onto the chocks, making removal very difficult. Make sure to reset the chocks after fueling. Let's talk about the chocks for a bit. They need to be 6 inches tall and approximately 24 inches wide to fully engage both tires. Now let's say you don't have chocks that are 24 inches wide. That's okay to use two sets as long as both tires are fully engaged front and back side. Now the chocks need to be made of hard rubber and secured together by a rope. Check the conditions of them. Make sure they're not cracked or showing signs of age. Aged chocks can be pushed away from the tire. Mooring the aircraft. Again, if you expect severe weather, we recommend hangering the aircraft or flying out of the affected area. We've seen structural damage to the aircraft and equipment when the tie downs are improperly implemented. If you still need to moor your aircraft, follow all the parking tips that we've given before, and when attaching the ropes, make sure that you're clear of any fairings or other equipment that could damage the rope or the aircraft. I didn't cover some steps such as covers or grounding your aircraft, so be sure to check with your maintenance manual for each additional step when it comes to parking and mooring your aircraft. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you have any additional questions, be sure to contact your product support team. Thanks for watching.